Thank you for being here and welcome to MIX 2017. Um, my name is Vincent Gagnon. I'm an audio director at Ubisoft. I've been there for almost uh, 12, sorry, 12 years now. Uh, worked on different projects, uh, Splinter Cells, uh, Child of Light, uh, unannounced projects, and lots of stuff. Um, I come from the music world. My formation is being a composer, a classical composer. Uh, but I worked also in software, I worked with uh, Applied Acoustic Systems, who are in Montreal, developing um, physical modeling plugins, like a Launch Lizard, which is an electric piano. Uh, I worked for M-Audio one year, where I traveled Canada, basically, which was very fun. And uh, yeah, so I've been 12 years at Ubisoft now. Yeah. So uh, my talk is about music and sound design, because Whenever I do sound design, it always ends up like a little song, which makes my colleagues laugh a lot. Uh, I learned over the years to shorten things and not make a small symphony in three seconds. <laughs> so the idea is use music theory to create uh, creative sound design or original sound design. Uh, for ambiences, SFX voices, and even music, which is maybe a bit weird. And also just to have fun, because you know we all, we all often hear like, oh, you know, we just relax, we don't save lives, you know, which is very true. But at the same time, we don't save lives, so we, we can have fun. And it doesn't mean that we're not passionate about what we do and that we don't want to push what we like as much as we can. So this is kind of what I like to do. Uh, some of it is uh, sometimes completely uh, unnecessary. You, you'll see some examples. And sometimes they don't work also. I like to present things that don't work because I feel you go to conferences and it's always like, here's what I do, it's great, it's awesome, and uh, da da da. But I mean, we all fail at some points and we all do things that we think are going to work very, very well in, in a game situation. Sometimes they just don't. Or they're kind of cool, coolish, but they're not like as we expected. So I have some of those examples, but not the majority. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's the super plan. So what inspired me to do this kind of sound design, the theory behind it, lots of examples and questions. Terry Riley saying hi. Uh, inspiration. <laughs> My first one was the book by Rodney Murray Sheffer, the Canadian composer based in Vancouver, called The Soundscape. Uh, it's called The Soundscape, The Tuning of the World. So just this little phrase got me, oh, this is very interesting. It's all about listening to your environment and notice how it sounds. Uh, are something things, certain things going together? Are they tuned? And it's all about, let's tune the world. And I said, yeah, let's do that. And in a game, we can actually tune the world. So that was my first inspiration. Um, he's talking a lot in this book about the evolution of the soundscape through ages, uh, which could very well apply to a franchise like Assassin's Creed. Like, it's completely different context if you're in Jerusalem, if you're in uh, London, if you're in Paris. And I remember talking with the audio artists on this uh, the project and we're saying, you know, we don't have cars, we don't have music, it's just like chicken, goats, and uh, you know, people. So it's an amazing sound design in all that franchise. So it's very interesting to follow the evolution of just the soundscape of the Assassin's Creed games. So that's a very big inspiration. He's talking also about tuning some gardens in the city, having some wood planks, when the rain falls on it, it's tuned to a certain note, so you go in the garden and you have this beautiful uh, soundscape. Uh, John Cage is a big influence also because of all the, the way he listens, the way he thinks something's not boring after, if it's boring after 10 minutes, try it for 3 hours, 6 hours, whatever. Uh, this inspired a lot of people like Brian Eno and all the ambient uh, movement. Uh, this famous piece, 4 minute 33, which is basically silence, but of course it's not silence because it's the piece is mostly all the surroundings that we're always in. Like if I play this piece right now, we'll hear a little ventilation, some people yawning, uh, stuff like that, you know. So um, that's another inspiration. The theory beyond it. Uh, the idea was to establish a key for a certain project. And that key will uh, unify sounds because we don't have always control, we rarely have control about what's playing when. So it can get pretty chaotic fast. 
uh, just to tune the world and create cohesion. Of course, this is not going to be applicable to any project, but I'll try to find projects that can fit that, or make the project fit that, actually. A bit like a symphony. If you take, for instance, uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, it's in C minor. First movement is in C minor, the second is in A flat major, the third one is in C minor, and the last one is in, is in C major with glimpse of C minor. So it's all like this journey through tonality, I would say. So this is what I tried to do. And we're in examples now. So the first one is from Splinter Cell Conviction, which dates a little bit, it's from 2010, I think. I've been on this project like five years. So at some point, we had time to think about a bit crazy stuff, so I just read the book The Soundscape and I said, okay, let's tune this game. So I took the music, listened to all the music we had, and the key that was there the most was D minor. So I said, okay, let's say that like an opera, D minor will be the main key for this game. Uh, so use that key to create unity and use the theme for, uh, for that. So here's the theme from Splinter Cell Conviction. small melodic cells. Uh, so that's the theme. So I said, okay, let's try to take that theme and put it like everywhere in the game. So we often have themes in our games, but we, we change the theme with every episode of a franchise. Like for instance, try to hum the theme from Assassin's Creed. I'm not even sure I have two or three that can came in my mind. Same thing for Splinter Cell. There's three themes for, or four themes for Splinter Cell. Uh, even Lalo Schifrin did a theme, composer from uh, Mission Impossible. It was never used because it was way too complex and nobody could hum it. So, so I tried to use, okay, let's, let's try to use this theme. But if I talk to you about James Bond theme, everybody knows it right away. So, because they keep the same theme. But we never keep the same theme, so the theme is not a theme then. <laughs> so the first, first um, use was in the main menu. So I said, okay, let's look at this little theme, which is basically uh, D, E, F, and G. Some A's somewhere, so I said, okay. Let's, when you scroll the menu, let's have those little notes uh, pop in. So let's just have a listen. So, well, if someone has a perfect pitch here, you can hear that it's not in D minor, actually. So my first example is kind of a fail. It's the opening of the game, and it's not my main key. So I'm like, why for why? Because the music for the menu um, was specifically, okay, we want the music in D minor, ta 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 ta, -ta. So I came, okay, let's, let's do this, let's put the music, let's put our D minor package. And I'm like, okay, really doesn't fit. So the music is in F minor, and uh, I was like, okay. And we couldn't ask the composer to redo it in D minor because of, uh, you know, he wouldn't wouldn't do it. Say, this is what I did, and you take it. So, I said, okay, thank you. So I had to tune my already tuned sounds to F minor. So first fail, <laughs> it's in F minor. Um, and then we have a map that's uh, a fair, an amusement park with different little boots. So what we did is, all these little boots have some funny music, so they all, they, they're all based on the theme. So the player goes around and hears those little music. You probably don't notice that it's the main theme, but it's fun. So here's a um, little cards. Cheap because they're little, they're little fair boots. You know, so, just. so that's the theme. 
So here's another little uh, move from Pirates. And my favorite one is the boxing booth, which is very cheap, like MIDI guitar stuff. And then it loops. <laughs> this is all cheap and cheap sounds, but it, it fits the game and the context. Uh, yeah, this is one probably that gets a little bit too too much. This um, sounds a uh, sounds assistant. It's calling someone on the phone. So I said, "Hey, let's dial the theme there." So I'll, I'll play just the the sound file first. <laughs> just to prove it's in the game. It's, it's Galliard is the only source we have. Okay, go. I'll freeze Galliard in place. <laughs> so I'm sure players are like, oh, the theme on the telephone, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, one thing that I um, I got actually from a Call of Duty game, I don't remember which one, when they hired Hans Zimmer to do the music, and I guess they paid a lot of money, so they wanted to showcase the music. So at some point, they, they dock everything, and they just pop this epic music cue with strings and it gives this super feeling of I'm a war hero and you know. So we kind of duplicate that. That's the final map of uh, Spencer's <coughs> conviction. Sam Fisher is going to the White House to save the president and the world and uh, the universe probably. So we have the main music system running and then being cut and just the theme is going to come in and it gives that feeling that oh, I'm going in the White House, I'm going to save the world. That was the idea. <laughs> So main music is being cut, and then theme kicks in, and all the, the gameplay sounds are also ducked. All the gameplay sounds are like that, so it gives you really a, a nice feeling, I think. Um, and <laughs> then we had some, uh, uh, we worked on uh, on this game with uh, two people mostly. Uh, Fabien Noel was the audio director of this game, I was the lead, lead designer, I guess. Uh, and Tristan Bernier, which is the best audio artist I know. And Tristan, when he designs sound, he comes to me and says, okay, I have this sound in my head, it's going to go like this, like this, like this. He goes in the sound room, and you go to here, and it's exactly what he had in mind. And you're like, whoa. Uh, and he had this idea where projected text to displace the objective on, on the buildings or somewhere. And he had this idea of having a piano note in, in, in there, like, wow, some sort of reverse piano sound. I said, okay, let's, let's try it. Then it might clash with different music, or so. No, no problem. Come on. So we tried it the first time, and it was like <laughs> the music and the the piano were completely apart, and it, it was really uh, really bad. So we adjust the sound with four notes, four different notes that could fit most of the keys of the music. So in each map, we go. Oh, the music is in E flat. Oh, I have a B flat here, so we'll use this B flat projected text. Here's how they sound. That's not a C, I'm sorry. So that's so you'll see that all over the game. You don't notice that it's different notes because it, it, it fits the music, but it is actually. Um, another thing we did is room tones. I love room tones, but of course they get a little bit boring, so we had the idea of tuning a room tone. Like, take a room tone, loop it, and 
process it with an EQ like that, which basically is a D minor 9 chord, which is very specific frequencies with a very big Q. Um, so the room tone starts to sound like a chord. And we add little, uh, little snippets of D minor. And this was for the museum where the bad guy was uh, like a, an art collector. He lives in a museum. So the idea was that this guy design, made sound design in his museum to, to be tuned in D minor. Like, yeah. So here's the room tone. all this special atmosphere that fits the, the museum and the bad guy. It's called the Shara, Sharawaji effect, which is when you're stuck of beauty in front of a natural soundscape. Like you climb a mountain, you arrive, and there's a lake, there's birds, and you're like, whoa, this is amazing, everything fits together, so it's the Sharawaji effect being knocked by the beauty of the sound. Uh, and one last, I think, which is, again, too much, is a famous tune balloon. Um, in a map, you have a little pond, and Sam is going by there. So we, what we did is that the, the music and the ambiences are exactly the same length in measures. So when we were starting designing an ambience, you put the music in your Pro Tools session. So okay, this is, my, my ambience is going to fit this music. So if there's a hole in the music, you can push the ambience a little. If something rhythmic comes, you can sync different things with the music. Not too much. <laughs> and you can tune. So here, you'll hear the loon calling the chord changes in the music. kind of singing on top of the music. Players went crazy. <laughs> As uh, Tristan, my colleague, said, this is the worst like thing in the world, because the player goes there like three seconds, so uh, he just passed by, and it's like, it's still a waste of time. <laughs> um, so I'm going to play you just the museum map, uh, just two, uh, two minutes, just so everything's in there, the projected text, the the tune things, you hear a, a church bell that is tuned to the music and uh, the entrance in the mu museum where the main system music uh, stops. but they would also tune in D minor when you open them in the same EQ as the room tone. between all the action and the super quiet music. 
And at some point also the, the violin just welcomes Sam. He, he enters a certain room and there's a little pew of five notes that plays. It's actually the notes of the name Sam Fisher put in notes. So the guy knows that he's coming and says, hey, look, I'm welcoming you with your own name in, in notes. I didn't put it there. Um, after that, we went on to do the next mentor cell, which was Blacklist, which was done in Toronto, Shanghai, and Montreal. Montreal, we did the adversarial part, the mer mercenary versus spy. So it's four players against four players. So I said, okay, well, let's call the same composer, which were uh, Kevin Cohen and Michael Nielsen, I forgot to mention it, who were uh, based in LA. And they now do the Forza franchise. They did four games, I think. Um, so I said, let's still be in D minor. Let's keep the same theme. And uh, this this big duality in this game, which is you can be a merc, which is more brutal, and a spy, more uh, sneaky, more uh, stealthy. So what I sent to the composer said, I'd like to have the same cue, same music for both, but played with different instruments, like let's say a jazz ensemble, a la essenceur or pour les chauffeurs, or uh, and something more beefy, like more rock for the mercenary. So. I said, it's the same music, so we're just going to pay for one minute, but it gives you two minutes. So the producers were super happy. It didn't happen, don't worry. <laughs> so this is what I sent to the composer. It's completely cheesy just to present the idea. That would be the mercenary. same theme as a conviction, and find an instrument that would define each uh, each character. This, this is what they, they came up And they said, Vince, you know, you're not going to pay for one minute only. You're going to pay for both cues. Fair enough. So, so here's the spy. They, they came with a, an instrument that's called a guitar viol. It's like viol de gamme and a guitar. It's electric. It has this very uh, airy kind of texture. And you'll hear the theme soon. Same theme, that's recognizable. It only plays at the beginning of a match. Uh, unfortunately, the single game had a different theme <laughs> than us. And this is now the Mer Mercenary. More or less the same parts. sounds. <coughs> so the countdown, before a match starts, you have this five second countdown, four <coughs> seconds. So we do different countdowns if you're a spy or a merc, but it's basically the same data. That's the merc. And the spy more eerie. Still in D minor. Uh, Vision mode. And this is the Merc. I don't remember which mode it is. Not the spy. It's one more hollow sound. So we really wanted to customize the experience if you're playing one or the other character. And all the gameplay sounds, the gadget sounds, will be more or less indie.
interesting thing you can do is if you want to be create unity, you, you, you tune in D, you put A, D, F, whatever. If you want to create tension, you put a little E flat there and suddenly you're all stressed just because of an E flat. Uh, oh, this is, this is my bad examples. So I had a warning when you throw a grenade, that was a, like a little song. <laughs> kind of had a barbell feeling. And then I sent to the team, oh, do you like this sound? And people were like, oh, I didn't know it was for the grenade. But no, I hate it. And I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up to be that. Clear feedback. Bit boring sound. <laughs> and uh, but no, that's, a, that's a real fail. 10 seconds left in the match. You need to be stressed. There's only 10 seconds to hack something or to finish the game. So that was my first design. It's clearly all of these. <laughs> like you're in a quiz on TV. <laughs> and it clashes with the music because the tempo is not the same. So. Here's what shipped. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I, I'll try to get shorter with you. Uh, this is, I think, my favorite. It's the voices. We're not tuning the voices, but we have mercenaries that talk to you on the radio with radio noise. So I went with the sound designer and said, I want the radio noise to be tuned. We have three characters, so let's give them each one note. So we have the one is D. It's subtle, but it, it's there. You'll hear the, the three separate and then the three together. One, two, three. Shoot straight and stay alive. Let's do this. Check your corners. I saw each other. Stay safe. I saw each other. Stay safe. Stay alive. At the end. My producer hated the idea. He said, you're just wasting money. <laughs> but I did. It, it, it gives a certain feeling to, to the game, honestly. Um, <clears throat> one thing we'll see this, I, uh, I got it from a, an AES or a GDC in Austin where a guy did music for a, an RPG game, which is very long, and he, for his symbol, the symbol sounds, instead of having like three or four samples, he took three symbol sounds and he cut them in like eight frequency bands, very, very narrow, and he recombined all that. So there were eight bands playing, but never from the same symbol, so it created infinite variations. So I got this idea from this guy, so I'm sorry I don't remember his name, uh, apply it to the grenades in, uh, in Splinter. So you have uh, four bands. So I think we have five grenade sounds chopped in four bands, low, low, mid, low, mid, high, and high. And you create randoms with all those bands. And you recombine a grenade sound. So here are the bands. Also, this all occurs with uh, volume that goes down on certain bands, filtering, um, and reverb. The more the farther you are, the more reverb you get. And so here's some combinations. Subtle, but your ear doesn't get tired of doing the same thing. Get a bit of fading sometimes, which is okay. I try to apply that to lots of stuff, but this is the only one. <laughs> uh, and then a quick show of the experience of being a spy and being a Mercury, all those D sounds. She's not tuned, by the way. Uh, 
This starts on a D, but it goes higher in pitch as the progression goes. Same. We're switching from a spy to a merc in the music, in the menu, versus weird instrument to the more. We wanted to customize the experience. We succeeded <coughs> in certain ways. Not, it's not completely different as we wanted to, but it, there's the, the ideas are there. Um, which is one example from Child of Light, which I was a uh, audio director for, but I came quite late in the project. Uh, most of the job was done by Hugo Bastien, the lead uh, audio designer on this project. So he designed all the systems, he made most of the sounds. I just came a little bit for the music and uh, Polish stuff. So, in one of the maps, you have a little mouse playing violin, which is very nice. Um, but then it clashes with the music, whatever you, you put there. So, I said, okay, let's take the music and write a real violin part and have it played by a real violinist and then sync the two together. So, when you arrive near that mouse, you will hear a real violin play and it will fit with the music. It will, it will not clash. So, this is the violin part <laughs> we wrote. And Pierre de Pirat did the music for, uh, for that game which fitted perfectly. So here's her music. Very gentle, perfect for a mouse playing violin. So here's the violin part. This is a fake violin, it's not real one. And the mix of the two. So you have a little mouse playing, that's all in harmony. I remember I presented this at Ubisoft once, and uh, Hugo was in the room, and you know I said, "Oh, so we sing that in the game, and uh, it was great." And he raised hand and said, "Actually, it never, it was never synced. We were never able to sing the two together, so they not, they don't play <laughs> correctly." I said, "We just didn't want to tell you. <laughs> we know you like your little mouse." <laughs> and uh, to end, we I'm doing research now for what could be done in the next step for that. Um, the idea is sound should be always moving. Uh, I like especially room tones, ambiences, so <clears throat> I'm now working in C sharp minor because I'm getting older, I guess I'm getting lower, I don't know. <laughs> I spent like 10 years in D minor with you know, 
wanted some sharks there. Um, so the idea, take a room tone, a bit like the grenades. Instead of having four bands, let's cut the, the, the room tones in three bands, low, mid, high. Let's have five different files, a bit different, different in length, that's very important. And uh, let's combine them. So here's uh, uh, an ambient separated in three bands. That's a full one. All those. Okay, very exciting. Uh, this is how it looks in wise. Just a random of band two. We have three randoms of all the five. Uh, five. So they, and then you play your three randoms together, so it takes the high from one file, the mid from another one, and the low from another one. And you crossfade when the one file is, is finished, it crossfades with another one, and that's why it's important that they're different in length, so the bands do not crossfade at the same time. So the highs could be changing, but the bass is still the same, and the bass changes that. And your files have to be in the same family, same category, but slightly different, otherwise it's just, it's not worth it. Uh, so here's the, and on each band, we have three EQs. So that's nine EQ total, total that you can work with. Uh, so I just tuned them on D minor, on C sharp minor, sorry. Um, so that gives your, your, your room, your ambience with a very clear chord uh, sound. But then you can have RTPCs on EQ. Let's have those EQs move in volume, like that. Maybe when you push your stick, some EQs kick in. Uh, maybe they move also in frequency. Maybe the the E in C sharp minor goes to F, making it major. So you can play with that. Um, maybe add some more tension when something's happening. And then put some RTPCs on the LFOs that are affecting the EQs. So it won't move constantly like that. It can move like that. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I love RTPCs. So. And again, it can be linked to sticks, to LFOs, to envelopes. Uh, so here's a combination of the three bands being mixed with all different EQs. The interesting thing with that is that I'm not trapped in C sharp minor. So if I want to go suddenly in E major, just adjust my EQs wherever I go. Um, can do total chaos with it, or it can be very, very subtle. very nice moving background. I had meetings with this running in the background for one hour and no one was saying anything, which is a win for some. Um, and then the other idea with it that goes with that is block music, which is not something really new, but it's more like think music is modular, modules, like have a music session with musicians, obviously, and have to record like specific notes, uh, in this case the, the C sharp minor uh, scale, uh, make them record chords, pulses, stuff. Uh, no long written cues, just you just play the C sharp, everybody. We have three instruments in that session, a cello, clarinet, and a on martineau. And so here's some of the blocks. Very short melodic style.
So you can learn with all those little blocks. Right? C'est en martelon, là. Indicator en, en martelon, ça. Um, so then we, you come back with all those blocks, combine them, and it sounds mostly in C-sharp minor, which is boring after a certain time. Uh, but then we did another session uh, at Ubisoft with uh, Didi Gagnon playing the percussion, Mathieu Rodi recording them, and we did the same thing. So let's have some just hits on certain tones. Let's have little rhythmic phrases uh, at the same tempo as the first session. Recorded uh, triplets, uh, quadruple, quintuplets, all the different variations. And at the end, we were doing a little song. That's what we. Oh, let's do a four tone song with all the the uh, little cells that we did, um, and then combine it with the first session. One play with lots of random. before it gives a very big C sharp <coughs> minor thing. The problem with that is that uh, you know it's it doesn't go anywhere right now. It's just like notes that fits together. We have different no package of notes like to make sure they don't clash. But it stays in that mood, which is very nice if you're doing nothing or if you just want to hear something nice. But so the the next step oh here's a like how it looks in wise. So all those you know hi hats uh, hi hats random uh, tom tom I had beat, snare beat, we recorded bass also. Um, but then you can just uh, check or uncheck the play and try lots of variations with that. So the next step would try to, to have some sense of a progression in that. So maybe with sequences, start with low notes, then we go at the clarinet, at the bass at some point. Uh, maybe get out of C sharp minor, because uh, at some point you're, uh, you've got it. So that's. My, my next work would be that, trying to have these ideas, but have a, a, something with a nice progression, a nice musical progression. Um, oh, but we learned. <laughs> um, we did that because I think it gives a different vision of the, the game soundscape. Again, the, the book is incredible. Unifies the game, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, because all untuned sound, all sounds that clash can be a very good thing also. Uh, still lots to explore for sure, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't depend on the project. Um, questions? That would be it. Great. Yeah. Uh, small question um, related to um, use. Uh, separating the sound into different bands. Yep. Um, and then after doing a little bit of um, EQing, um, I would assume that because of the fact that you had them in different bands, there was less possibility for phasing and problems like that. But yep. did you were there any issues that were uh, coming about due to the fact that you were playing random clips? Uh, not, not really, because they're very, very separated, like they're, they're super EQ, they're super steep, so okay. I think 56 dB per octave, so okay. very steep. 
So there's no, and I mean the the nature of those sounds also will not phase a lot. So, but there's never two mids playing together or two basses. That would create some yeah, yeah. Uh, weird stuff. But it's through the EQs. Uh, when you're EQing the the low the low the low bands, uh, you know I think I've got it at two two hundred fifty hertz. So if you EQ anything <laughs> over that, it will have no effect. So you have to remember that. Oh, why am I not hearing it? Oh, yeah, true. I'm EQing at 500 hertz or something like that. So, but yeah, no, not not too many problems. The the the, the <coughs> fact that the files are slightly different helps a lot also. Yeah. Just slightly different in content, so you don't have those weird artifacts. Yes. So you you talked about uh, principle of kind of keeping everything within a certain tonal framework as a means of cohesiveness. I'm curious if you've ever considered trying to use those same principles to create a juxtaposition, you know, maybe having bitonality or something to, you know, create a, a sense of tension. I'm curious yes, if yes. Yeah, right now, as I said, sometimes, like I think the, the spy versus smirk thing, you hear, you hear a lot of these. Like at some point you say, okay, please can I hear it? I don't know. So, but yeah, you can go also like, Let's have something in D minor, but let's have something completely different. Let's go uh, uh, F sharp major and see how it. What, what does it create tension? Does it create chaos? Does it create interesting stuff? There's lots of things that that you can do here, yeah, definitely. I mean, the the spy and the mer could have been in two different keys. That would have been interesting too. It would have been more. Uh, the contrast would have been better, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's true. There's a lot of things that could be explored in that, in that way. In, by tonality, by uh, uh, polyrhythmic too. Like right now, my, my research, uh, everybody's at 118 beats per minute. So, but what about if you combine 118 and 123? So maybe some Steve Reich stuff going on, like phasing and then getting back in, in sync. That could be very, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, there's it's, it's lots, lots of... Uh, I'm a bit trapped in my <laughs> in my same key in my. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. um, I'm a bit curious about how you implemented the block system in, in Wise because you show the picture with a lot of uh, play uh, actions yep. within an event. But uh, what does it play exactly? Do you have stuff in the actor mixer uh, hierarchy or? It's, it's basically all randoms. Yeah. Just I let's say for the notes, I choose some notes. One package it will have. C sharp, D sharp, and E, with mix of the three instruments. We'll have lots of silence also that are time um, three measures, four measures, whatever. So they, they move like that. And uh, basically, all the packages are, are for now are just just that. Okay. They're one instrument or one one category like melodic or harmonic, and you just hit play on that. And since they're all at the same uh, same tempo. They will fit. So okay. So uh, that's how you keep it in sync. Like every uh, every uh, musical phrase is uh, um, like, for example, three measures exactly three measures. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I vary three, five, four, yeah. seven because uh, I want everybody to you know. But exactly. Uh, a yeah. Number of measures. <coughs> yes. Even the single hits. Yeah. Like the boom. Well, okay, one measure and then five measure of silence, seven measure of silence, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll add uh, quarter notes, triplets in the same package to get some rhythmic activity, and then longer phrases, more like little motif, like tum taka tum pom pom, and then you, you'll have that at some point if you want to get a little bit more interesting. And then, yeah, after we, I'm trying to build like <laughs> beautiful musical phrases with those randoms, and it's, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and since you love artifices, uh, is there a system where maybe you build more tension or uh, stuff like that, or is it just uh, like purely generative? Uh, some, of, some of them are just LFOs that move and that just do their things, but other can be, I have the RTPC on the sticks of the controller, so let's say you have a player that starts moving or running, you could have a little uh, hi-hat or a bass notes or a... <coughs> but there's lots to explore still in that uh, in the RTPCs and because uh, they could be... Interesting thing is they have to be game-related at some point, like, oh, okay, this the hi-hat started, it means that uh, the big green monster is near or uh, whatever. <laughs> 
what river is near you. Uh, but yes, that's true. There's a um, what you heard. The RTPCs are a bit like on their own and free. Okay. There's not a lot of uh, yeah game related stuff or a specific thing that will pop something, which would be very interesting. So um, you you did present a lot of techniques on music, on ambiences, on, on sound effects, and you've been somewhat lucky to have a lot of time to explore all of that. So imagine you <laughs> imagine you end up with a project and you have like have that that amount of time and you have to prioritize. Uh, what would you keep there? What what's the most important element you believe? Uh, uh, well, for me, I think having a, a main key for the game, like a symphony, I think that that's an idea I like. I think it kind of works because you can always get out of that or get far away from it if you want. But having that in mind, I, f I find very interesting. Because otherwise, you, you receive music oh, in lots of keys and lots of. which can be very interesting, like going from a menu that's in C major and getting in game in uh, F sharp minor gives that oh, big contrast and okay we're somewhere else so that uh, one of my, the person I was working with hated the fact that everything was tuned he didn't like going from the menu in D minor to the game in D minor he said no I like when it clashes you you get out of the menu and you're like whoa okay and you know it's a very interesting point of view I said oh really you like that yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the guy is, uh, Adam actually is a very, very uh, good musician, so it was very interesting to, to be challenged on that, because that's, that's what you want to also. Or, uh, you know, I have Tristan telling me, uh, like, with the nine EQs, that's a bit, you know, maybe too much. So Tristan comes to me and says, dude. <laughs> and when I hear that dude, I know that, okay, I'll, I'll keep six. No, keep three. Come on. So. I'm trying to work with three on the mid mid band where the, the ear is more sensitive, around one one, two, three K. So but yeah, probably the nine EQs at some point if it's it's in a game like you know <laughs> someone's gonna <laughs> come and see me the sound is taking all the power of the console because of your fucking EQ. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Question? Yeah. Yeah, um, is there a what do, what do you think about like adding, taking your all your system, and uh, maybe a good thing that Simon is here, but uh, uh, for answering that, the adding the MIDI capacities of uh, Wise over that to have even more, more control in your tonalities, uh, progressions, and stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, we scratch the surface of what Wise can do. Uh, so yes, the next step, as I said, the sequences and all that with the music system. This is where we're. Going trying to go now but yeah it's definitely a wise base for that for sure because uh, yeah with the sequences the randoms all the, the transitions uh, <coughs> and yeah as I said related to game then it, it hopefully will take life somewhere so but yes yes so, yeah because thing, things taken out of context and wise will really not like I mean you could do some of this stuff in Ableton Live for instance but uh, how do you choose a key? Is it just arbitrary or is there a, a, a theory? Uh, well, the C sharp minor was arbitrary. It's a key I like. And we started with <laughs> the D minor. That, uh, basically, that's the only reason. It fits well under the hands on a keyboard and uh, it has nice chords. And it, uh, uh, that's the reason. The D minor for Splinter Cell. As I said, I, re I read the book during production, so we had all the music already. All the music was mostly composed, so I just checked all the, the music, and D minor was the, the key that most cues were in, so that's why I chose D minor for, for this one. But I don't know, for, to start a project, maybe if I have an idea that, oh, it will be all guitar-based, uh, maybe I would go E major. <laughs> you know? But then, yeah, depending on if you have any instrumentation, some, you know, some tonalities, Play better on instruments than others. Um, I know that clarinet don't usually like C sharp minor. <laughs> I got that confirmed at the session. Like, <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it depends. I think, but basically, it would be just like which key you like or 
unless there's something very, very specific. And I have lots of um, music from our Ubisoft games, all the soundtracks for uh, some of our games, Assassins, uh, Blood Dragon. I have some t-shirts too, so we can just drop by and uh, answer a secret question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're, they're all here, and uh, just grab them if you, if you like one of them. Thank you. Thank you very much.